Hi everybody! Welcome to Eating in April. So I've not made a video in a while. It's because I've been very busy. Um, for one thing, my cat that made appearances in some of the videos is no longer with us. She was almost 16 years old and we had to put her to sleep, but she lived for a very long time, even though she was diabetic and had to take shots. So she will be, she will not be joining us today, unfortunately. And I have taken a new job. I am a content writer at a, at a company called Mystic Sense now. I was doing psychic work for them, and now I've added this also, so you can check us out anytime you want to. And I've also been studying making more Asian food. Um, as some of you know, Teddy and I have digestive issues, and we have to watch what we eat. So I cook all of our food. We almost never get restaurant food now. And um, one of the things that I discovered is they will take seafood and put a ginger and a scallion uh, sauce over it, and it's a piece of cake. So I tried this with scallops this week, and it's wonderful. And you can make your scallops plain and just put salt and pepper after pan searing the way that I show you, or you can make this wonderful broth that I'm going to show you. So without further ado, without Nessa, here we go. we go. All right, and you see we are still in between dishwashers, but that's okay. Now, I just take frozen scallops, get them out while they're frozen, and I have got this many for a serving because my husband and I like a lot of scallops, and I just serve them with plain white rice. The way that I do this, I'm going to adjust this so that you can see a little bit more easily. I'll just pop it in the microwave for two and a half minutes and then pat it dry and throw it in the pan. So here we go. And that means that our rice is done. I made a pan of rice. So I'm just going to put that in here. I make rice and keep it on hand every day. I just make it and I immediately put it in the refrigerator and it obviously it doesn't last very long. We eat a lot of rice in this house. Um, if you've watched any of my videos, you're going to recognize that I look very different than I did before. I've dropped about 50 pounds, maybe more. I've not weighed myself in a while and that's through reducing sugar and cutting out wheat. Okay, so I've got my frying pan and while my scallops are thawing, I'm heating this on medium heat. I'm gonna put this rice in the fridge. Okay. Since we shop at Aldi, I use this olive oil because it's good for your heart. It doesn't have any flavor. This is a light olive oil, pure olive oil, so it's not like your extra virgin that has flavor. And I'm going to put about two tablespoons of this in the pan. This starts heating while these are thawing. And what I've done for one serving, this is how many green onions I use. This right here, maybe a teaspoonful of ginger. These are wonderful and fresh. And then you get to get out the cornstarch. And I'm going to get out the chicken broth. This brand is something that I discovered late last year because they changed the ingredients in the Kroger low sodium broth that I use. This right here from Giant Eagle has no salt added, and it is just delicious. It's very easy on the stomach for us. And then I've got my salt and pepper. Okay, we've just got a few seconds left to go. I'm going to grab my paper towels. It is very important when you're putting um, meat in oil to cook it that you pat it dry first. Okay, here we go. Now 
Now these have shrunk a little bit in size. You see the steam coming off them. Also having them in the microwave partially poaches them and poaching means that you use less oil. So what I do is I pour this water off and put some cold water on so that it's cool enough to handle with my hands and then I pat it dry. Just like that. Okay. Now this is going to be my husband's first time having this and I know, I know that he's going to like this because I know what his taste is. I just take this and I blot all the water off. I'm going to tilt this so that you can see the frying pan. There we go. And you can also see my little bucket back here. I'm composting for the soil. We've pulled some shrubbery so that we can plant some more things. Okay, so you see we've got about that much oil. And I'm just going to put, start putting these in here one at a time. You can hear that sizzling. They've already started. While this is cooking, we're going to get the cornstarch slurry ready. That's what they like to call it as a cornstarch slurry. And what you do is you make, it's basically a gravy. Instead of using flour, you use cornstarch. And I suppose that you could use flour or gluten-free flour for this, but cornstarch just has a specific flavor that's so light that you really can't detect it. And I really love to use that in my gravies. So here we go. So this is going to be made ahead of time. And you do want to measure for this just because that makes it much easier. Well, I've got my quarter teaspoon measure here instead of my half. So I'm going to do one half teaspoon of cornstarch. So I'll have to do a quarter teaspoon twice, which is perfectly fine. And then it's tablespoons for the gravy. Now, since this is just for one serving, you're not going to use very much. And I'm sure that there are some people that will use other measurements, but this is what I use. So for one half teaspoon of cornstarch, I use two tablespoons, tablespoons of the broth. You can use any broth that you want for this. If you have a seafood broth, if you have a different broth, if you want a vegetable broth, or if you want to use water. But this particular broth by Giant Eagle, chicken broth with no salt added, imparts such good flavor. And then you're going to put your salt and then however much pepper you want. I suppose you could use soy sauce, but I try not to use soy sauce too often or just use small amounts because it has a lot of sodium in it. So you're going to want to make sure to stir this up real, real good. Make sure everything is dissolved. And you want to put the cornstarch in first and then put the liquid in over top of that. You don't put the cornstarch directly into the liquid. It just makes it harder to stir up. So here we go with that. Make sure to get all the lumps and clumps out of it and make it just perfect. And eat it is. Yep. Now I'm going to go ahead and put this back in the fridge. These are cooking nicely. Now some people will put the sauce in first and cook the scallops in that and I don't do that because I'm going to pan sear one side and get a good crunch on that first. And then the wonderful thing about cornstarch is it will thicken up your cornstarch broth will thicken up very quickly the second it hits the heat. So I add this right towards the end. Now, I'm sure there are other ways of doing this, but I've got my best friend here. This is what I turn my scallops with. Now see, that's not quite as brown as I want. I want them to get a little bit browner. Yeah. Another thing when you're cooking scallops, probably because I boil them in the water 
Um, there'll be a little bit of liquid on them so that grease will pop. Don't be afraid to protect your eyes with something like these. I am so accident prone at this point that a lot of times when I'm cooking, I put these on. And since this is popping, I'm going to wear these. I know I look ugly. But let me tell you something. I've got a pretty apron and this is worth it. So here we go. Just going to turn this up a little bit more. See that? Okay. That is just positively gorgeous. Now I only use about a tablespoon of oil. You can also use roasted sesame oil for this if you want to impart that flavor on it, but you absolutely don't have to. Now our rice is already ready and this is going to go really quickly. This part is going to go really quickly. So I'm going to get the plate and I'm going to get the rice and I'm going to go ahead and put the rice on the plate so you can see what it looks like. These plates are from my husband's Aunt Betty. These are Franciscan Wares Desert Rose. I use these for everything. My husband's Aunt Betty had a huge collection of these, and um, her sister, my husband's granny, took them uh, when, when Aunt Betty passed on, and she just had them out in her storage unit, out in her back. And nobody in the family wanted these, but I like pink, so we got the Franciscan Ware, and I am tickled, just absolutely tickled. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make room in this oil. Pop that ginger in first. Because green onions cook really fast. So you want to get a little bit of flavor out of that first. Here we go with this fresh, steaming hot rice. See that steam coming up? Oh, wonderful, wonderful. Okay. Now I crisped the um, the ginger a little bit. That was my bad, but it's still gonna taste good. <laughs> you don't have to cook ginger crispy. It's still gonna taste good. We're just gonna wilt these green onions just a teeny little bit, just the teeniest little bit. You can soften them as much as you want, but you really don't have to cook them very much. Okay. And now comes the magic. Give your cornstarch slurry another stir because it will have settled a little bit. Cut off the heat immediately. And that's done. Pop those on the plate. Pop those on the plate. Scrape that salsa. And there you have a plate of my ginger green onion scallops on a bed of hot steaming rice. And this has been Eating at April's. Join me again next time.